All right. Uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for being here. Uh, I think it's my first time, and I'm speaking for so many people. So, uh, yeah, really nice. Uh, but before we start, uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, so my name is, uh, my name is Dries. Uh, I work now uh, five years at Monkey Shot. Uh, I started as a UI designer, and I'm uh, shifting my focus uh, more to UX design. Um, for the moment, I'm a consultant uh, at Balwaze. Uh, it's my first uh, month at Balwaze. Uh, before that, I was working for the city of Antwerp. Uh, but the hack of the city of Antwerp, uh, uh, yeah, we had to just change uh, of project. Um, yeah, in my free time, I play soccer, uh, the lowest level. Um, we always play for the third time. Uh, and then I really like uh, to read comics. Uh, a little bit more about Monkey Shot. So, uh, yeah, we're really uh, people orientated and we only do uh, make, yeah, digital uh, solutions. Uh, we have UX researchers, architects, and designers. Uh, like Annie told, uh, yeah, we all uh, still uh, are searching for people. So if you want to come and have a chat with us, just come and talk with us. And uh, who knows? Uh, so what are we going to talk about uh, tonight? Uh, we're going to talk about decision making. Uh, I'm going to give you first like a small introduction. Uh, then we're going to see all the stages that we go through when we are making a decision. Uh, we're going to uh, talk about different decision types. And then if we have time enough, uh, we're going to talk about fast decisions. Uh, but let's see. Um, all right, so decision making. Um, why do I, want to talk, uh, do I want to talk about decision making? Yeah, I'm a consultant and often you find yourself in complex uh, organizational structures and it's not always clear which decisions uh, that you can make. Uh, also, you just want to learn faster from your decisions. Um, yeah, hold on. Uh, so what is my goal for tonight? I just hope that you become more aware of different decision types uh, that you can um, demonstrate in a professional environment what the impact of a decision can be uh, and that you also can uh, make faster decisions. Uh, we're going to do some exercises. Uh, normally, I'll find some cards, orange one and a blue one. Uh, it's real, uh, yeah, I try to, to make it approachable. Um, there will always be two answers uh, on the slide and you will just have to put a matching card uh, in the air. So uh, let's try the exercises. Um, so if I should ask you which pair of gloves are the best? It are the mittens of the gloves. You can see the color. All right, I see, okay, a lot of colors already. All right. Okay, I see uh, a lot of colors. So uh, let's take a look at the answer. <laughs> All right. So it actually all depends on the context or the situation. There is no good answer here. Um, the people who chose the orange card, they prefer dexterity above warmth. While the people who chose the blue, the mittens, they prefer warmth above dexterity. So it's all about, uh, for your personal uh, opinion. And if you chose for the gloves, um, then you give up warmth. Or well, if you choose for the mittens, you prefer the warmth and you give up the dexterity. So that brings us to our next slide. You're sacrificing a goal to achieve a competitive one. And then we are talking about a trade-off. And a trade-off is always here when we're making uh, a decision. Um, an example uh, of a trade-off uh, is for Google. In the past, they all got these distinctive app icons, uh, but there was no coherence, no uh, brand uh, recognition. Uh, and they chose to make all the icons the same. Now, uh, what is the trade-off here? Uh, they're losing the uh, app distinctiveness. So it's now it's really hard to see which uh, icon is what. I, for me, it's a big problem if I open my phone and I want something from Google. It's really hard to see which one that I need. Um, but it was a, a, yeah, a choice from Google, a deliberate choice, that they want more recognition from their brand um, before, uh, before the app distinctiveness. Now, a small uh, trade-off that I had uh, last month, uh, it was for the city of Antwerp, um, and we were uh, translating uh, the component library from XD uh, to Figma. Uh, and we were thinking about uh, the tables, like how can we uh, design tables faster because really something time consuming. Um, and yeah, we just find a, a solution to help us design faster. Uh, and we, there were some options like uh, we, can, we can use only table cells, we can make a component of a table row or a column just to design faster tables. But I will tell you later more uh, about this trade-off. Uh, first, we're going to see this decisions. Never assume that a decision is right or, uh, or wrong. If you think about the gloves, the mittens or the gloves, none of them are wrong. So just try to understand why that decision is made. That will help you understand better uh, uh, the situation or the problem. 
Um, if you don't know what's the best for you, try to list the pros and the cons so you can make a decision uh, faster. And no, there's always a trade-off, there's always a catch. Uh, and there we see like a small uh, graph uh, for a project. So if you want a good project and a cheap uh, project, it will probably build slow. So you know there's always um, a catch. All right, then we're going to talk about the different stages, the different phases that we go through if we make a decision. Everybody goes through these uh, phases, stages, um, even if we don't know it. <laughs> all right, aha, we're back. No, we're not back. Uh, yeah, all right. Um, so in the first stage, we're going to identify the options. So we're going to try to understand the problem, what are we dealing with, and then maybe find some possible solutions. In that second phase, uh, we're going to really collect the options, but we're going to do that based on research, analytics, maybe ask an expert. Uh, there are different ways to do that. Uh, and then we're going to uh, list all the options that we collected. In that third phase, then we're going to weigh the evidence next to each other um, to see what's the best one. And yeah, when we decide it, we're going to uh, implement it, and then later we're going to evaluate it and see what was the best uh, solution. If we're not happy with the result, we can just go back to phase one or to phase two. Now, if we get, uh, take a look at the tables, uh, so uh, if we identify the option, we're going to try to think what was the problem with the tables. Um, we didn't have uh, much time at the city of Antwerp to, to um, yeah, design a project, maybe you had a week, maybe less, uh, and yeah, tables are really time consuming if you have to design it, or maybe if you get feedback and you have to change everything again. Um, so that was the, the problem. We already identified it, some possible solutions. We can uh, use columns, we can use rows, maybe just only table cells um, to uh, design tables. But we also did some research like how are people designing in Figma, uh, maybe with plugins and other things uh, that they could do. Then we were weighing the evidence and we were looking what was the best solution for us. What's the most flexible way? Um, and then we decided, okay, sales is for us the most flexible way because we can uh, yeah, easily edit it if we're not happy with it. We can choose if we want to design in columns or in rows uh, or whatever. Uh, and then we tested it. Uh, and if, yeah, unfortunately, I didn't test in it because I had to stop at the city of Antwerp. Uh, but they know they still have to take a look at it and evaluate it when it's uh, not good that they will have to take a look at it again. Um, here we see a graph uh, about uh, decision making. And um, when we see the blue color, that is a decision made on intuition. While the orange, that's a decision made uh, deliberately. Um, and we see people make different decisions or take a different approach to make decisions. Uh, before in the first row, we see uh, a partner. So if we're choosing a partner, we really do that more with intuition than we do that deliberately. But if you look at the last column or the last row for medical or vacation, uh, we're gonna take more time for it. We're gonna do some research, we're gonna look at it like maybe what's the cheapest or we're gonna hear what friends are, how is that destination? Um, so we're gonna take more time to take that decision. So not every decision is the same. We have different decision types. So that brings us to our next uh, chapter. Uh, and then we have the decision type um, impact. So we have decisions with a high impact or a low impact. Uh, a decision with a high impact yeah, is, uh, often um, affects the organizational uh, goals for changing the informational ar architecture of your website. While a decision with a low impact has no or a low impact on the goals of an organization. If you change a color or something, uh, it has no impact on the goal of the organization. Then we have the reversibility. Uh, we have decisions with a high and a low reversibility. So a decision um, with a high reversibility, something that easily can be reversed. Uh, for example, changing the font on a website. It's really easy done, uh, it's no big task. Uh, something with a low reversibility, uh, example, you purchase a new technology and then later you think, damn, it's not the technology that I need. It's not that easy to change back because that was really a costly um, yeah, decision. Uh, now we have a tactical and strategic uh, decisions. A tactical decision is more like how a goal is implemented. Uh, so often it has a low impact um, and it's easily reversible. While a strategic decision is more a selection or a prioritization of goals um, of a company. So with a high impact and difficult to reverse. Uh, an example uh, of a tactical decision that we made at MonkeyShot uh, a while ago uh, was for um, yeah, a colleague of me uh, was busy with a project and he had to decide, are we going to make all the buttons on the, site, uh, on the website the same 
or are we going to make a distinctive button? For example, if you have an e-commerce website, maybe you want that shopping cart button bigger, a different color, you want it more distinctive than the others. Uh, and yeah, he chose to make all the buttons the same. He preferred consistency above uh, yeah, the difference. Um, an example of a strategic decision was more for us. Um, it was an e-shop for a company. So they were selling laptops and other things uh, at their company. And we had to decide, uh, are we going to design for the impulse shopper? So show the products at the homepage so we can just like see, I want that up, I don't want to look further. Uh, so you can buy that laptop. Or do we want to design more for people who compare the prices on a detailed page? And we, uh, we went here for the last um, option. So we're gonna do another uh, exercise. Um, if I say, should we uh, use a minimalistic design or a content heavy design? Do you think that is a tactical decision or a strategic decision? A strategic de uh, decision uh, is, has a low reversibility and a high impact uh, on the organizational um, goals. So with that information, do you think it's orange or blue? All right, some blue, I see one red, and an orange, a couple of orange. All right, okay. This is a strategic uh, decision because the more content you place on a website, the more difficult uh, it is for people to find stuff on your website. So it, it has an impact on the goal of your organization. So if you would say, uh, say um, should we require users to click save instead of automatically saving their inputs of a form? Is this a strategic or a tactical decision? Does it have a high impact or not? All right, I see some orange cards. see a lot of orange cards. All right. It is indeed a tactical decision. Uh, it has no impact on the goal of the organization. You still collect the data uh, from the form. Now, uh, these different types of decision making, they call for a different strategy to make your de uh, decision at a different way. And here we have satisfying. So from satisfy to suffice. Just find a solution as fast enough and as good enough uh, as soon as possible. Often this is a tactical decision. Uh, while maximizing is really find the best solution for your company. The to uh, thorough research uh, and look what has the greatest benefits and with the lowest costs. Um, another two exercises, but now we're going to do two exercises after each other and then I will show you uh, the answer. So uh, Niels and Norman, a web, uh, website, to more uh, the founders, we can say, of uh, UX Design, they have a website, uh, and they wanted to uh, change the color blue. So which strategy should they adjust? Is this satisfy, find uh, a new color blue as soon as possible? Or should it be maximized to thorough research and look for the solution uh, with the highest revenue and the lowest cost? So if you think it's orange, satisfy, if you think uh, it's maximized, then it's blue. All right. Okay. <laughs> Try to remember uh, your answer, uh, because first we're going to the next uh, exercise. And it's actually the same question, but then for Google. So um, yeah, for Google, adjusting the color blue for Google, is that uh, maximizing or is this satisfying? All right, I see more blue ones, okay. No, uh, one orange, all right, two, all right. So actually the first one, Niels and Norman, is about satisfying, just finding a solution good enough. The links here of click-through rates, it's not the core of the business of Niels and Norman. People go dedicated through their website and they're looking for something. While for Google, it's their core business. They want more click rates, they want more uh, that people uh, find other websites. So for Google, it's the core of their, uh, their, um, yeah, their business. Uh, and they did uh, the research. Um, you, can, you can find it online. I'm also uh, sharing this, uh, the slides. The link is there uh, underneath of it, and it's called Fifty Shades of Blue. Uh, and they did really thorough research, research, and they found the color of blue. And uh, just by changing the color, I think they made, I'm not, I, I don't dare to say the number again, but I, I think it was like eight, of 80 million more revenue just by changing the color uh, blue. So yeah, it has really impact uh, on the goals of the organization. <laughs> All right, I think we're going fast enough. How, how much, yeah, all right. 
then we can uh, talk about uh, the fast decisions. So uh, when a decision is tactical, so when it has a low impact, uh, we're going to skip phase two. Often we also do this intuitively. We don't think about it, we just do it. Um, voila, yeah, and that's intuition. Um, we also have other frameworks for it, like for example, design principles, that's also a way to skip uh, the second phase. Uh, but we're going to talk about intuition today. Um, and yeah, it, yeah the, uh, the pro of intuition is it go really fast, it can produce a lot of ideas, but it's something really not uh, feasible. It's really hard to explain to people. Um, you cannot measure it, so uh, yeah, there are also um, some disadvantages. Now, what if we know uh, firefighters, 80% in emergency situations, they act on intuition. It's really a lot. Also, there's a, like, a, a really big uh, research uh, site, so if you want to, to look it up, it's also um, there. Um, but if we're going to look, what happens when we make a decision intuitively? So we're going to match the situation with a known pattern. For example, the firefighter, they really uh, they exercise with a fake house that's on fire, and they learn how to uh, distinguish the fire. Um, so in a real situation, they would identify possible solutions. So they trained like kicking in the door, maybe just you can open the door, um, you can't go inside, maybe there are a lot of options. And every time they have an option, they mentally simulate the result of it. Um, and until they think this is the best option, and they're gonna act on it. So that is uh, intuition. But now, uh, yeah, firefighters, they're not training on intuition, they train on their basic um, handlings. So you can also train your intuition in that way. And a good way for us to train our intuition is um, fail fast. You can look it up. Uh, it's, I think it's also a framework. And you have a, a small book. And each week, just like take five minutes for yourself, write down the decision that you are making. And then once a month, five minutes, 10 minutes is enough once a month, you're just going to evaluate your own decisions. And then you can see, was it a successful decision or was it a bad decision? And based on that, you will learn to make decisions faster in the future. All right, so biases uh, influence uh, our intuition. And there we have four frameworks. Uh, it's framing, uh, the overconfidence effect, uh, loss aversion, and um, the sunk uh, cost fallacy. If you are talking about framing, uh, it's the way how a question is asked. So it's the same data, um, but people will also have a different conclusion because of the way, of we, ask, uh, the way we ask it. Um, so avoid framing by a failure and a success frame. So if I would say to you, um, seven out of 10 people survived our vacation trip, so it was really a good vacation. You would think, okay. But if I would say three people died on our vacation, you would think, oh, that's really not a good way. Um, so if you would think, how can I use this in a professional context if people are coming with you and they did their research and they're just throwing some numbers at you, I always try to put it in a different um, frame. An example, the chances of surviving a risky operation, 90% chance to survive or 10% chance of dying. It's really a different way at looking uh, at that uh, operation. But just like by putting the two frames, um, you can make a more neutral uh, decision of a more rational uh, decision. Uh, another example here from um, uh, McDonald's, how they uh, yeah, put it in an advertise. So they say, hey, our burger is 90% one fat free. Um, we can also say the burger is 9% fat, uh, while research say uh, the limit is 10% uh, for uh, saturated fats. Um, so actually, it's, it's a lot. The overconfidence um, effect. Um, so as an expert, we're often too uh, confident uh, about what it's saying. Um, we're going to ignore random fluctuations or var variables, uh, and that's just because we have that special um, knowledge. Uh, then we have loss aversion, and the pain of losing something is twice as hard than uh, the effect of winning something. Um, there's also uh, an, um, an experiment, and I think some of you will know it, it's with uh, the MUG, uh, and there was a group and was, they did some research, uh, and 50%, let's say, the whole left side, they got an, a MUG. Then they did the whole experiment, and at the end, they took the MUG back. Uh, and then they asked everyone to say how much is the MUG worth. And the, uh, the people who lost the MUG, they said, let's say it was uh, six euro, and the people who didn't have a mug, they say it was two euro. And just because the people, they lost the mug, it was more worth to them. Uh, also, the research is also um, at the bottom, if you really want to look it up. Uh, and then we have the sunk uh, cost fallacy. That's actually when we know that something will not be successful, and we still put um, time um, in it. 
often it's also um, an effect of the, the, the loss aversion. Eh? When you have a feeling it's something losing, you're going to put more time in it, uh, even when you know it will not be successful. Uh, so just try to focus on the current and the future costs uh, to be more aware uh, of this. Uh, yeah. in, uh, uh, just be more aware of it. <laughs> Uh, and I think this is it. Uh, so thank you, everyone, um, for listening, and I hope uh, yeah, you found it interesting. Thanks so much for joining us. That was fantastic. And I, I love um, this, that last part of it because it brought up so many uh, biases, like cognitive biases. And a few years ago, I got really geeked out on this podcast that just focuses on cognitive biases. It goes like one by one, and like the sunk cost fallacy was one of them. One of them, yeah. And, it show, and he always talks about how you can apply it to your life, but also your work as a designer. And it's really eye-opening um, to connect the two. So yeah. I love those. That's really great. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know if uh, anyone has questions. Yeah, yeah this, this I'll take some screen, questions. No questions. I mean, so it's clear for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. The, um, which technology would you buy for the design? So just because I have a mic on, what technology might you buy to help make decisions? Is there? I don't think there's a technology that will help you make better decisions. AI. Actually, one of the decisions is buying the technology for for design purpose. You mentioned that, I think. Oh uh, yeah, so just like a technology, well, uh, especially for design purposes, just like in general, uh, let's say you need a new. Um, Content management tool for, for your website or something. Um, just be aware which content management uh, system you are going uh, to buy because you're not happy with it, you're stuck with it. Mm -hmm. and that was what I tried to point out. So if it's, it's uh, expensive, take more time to take a decision because it's not a decision that you can like easily uh, improve. Do you find that you most often use these just for your own work or internally, or do you often have to use these to help clients make decisions as well? Um, I often help, uh, it helps me really a lot as a consultant that people are pointing things out or they make a decision. One, for myself, just to try to understand uh, what's the impact of the decision and why they made it, because maybe I think, oh, that's a bad decision. Mm. But then if you like, try to, to understand it and why they did it, and uh, it makes yeah, it's, it's just more, more clear. Mm -hmm. um, and also just to help the client if they're making a decision. Maybe you think it's, it's, it's to make a decision too fast, and you think the impact will be too high. Just point it out, just like what are the pros, what are the cons, and maybe it helps the client also to make a better decision, uh, and you can save a, a lot of money with it. So, yeah, 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 that's a good idea. And yes. often exposing the, the ways that you make decisions can help convince them. Yeah, yeah, yeah indeed, well. indeed. Yep. Any other questions? Is there any from the stream? I, don't, I didn't think I said anything. No. no. Okay. Is there a way to score questions beforehand, uh, like decisions beforehand? To what? To, to well, I mean, could you build this into a scoring model almost? Or is or I think so. It's more like steps. if you're making deliberate decisions, then you can put a score system. It's like the same way you do pros and cons. You can uh, list everything. You can put a way on it. Like, um, what is the most important thing? Uh, let's say you want to buy a chair, and for me, the color is not so important, but more the size. And then you can list it up and you can say, ah, oh, pro is for this chair, it's the size, but not the color. But if you give more weight to the size than the color, so that's maybe a way to, to, uh, to see what's more important for you. Uh, mm -hmm. Not really a way to, to, yeah, to put it in a score or something. Yeah. Right, cool. Nice. Okay, well, thank you again. That was thank fascinating. You. Loved it. Thank you. And, um, Every speaker at UX Antwerp gets a patch. We don't know why, but we started doing it from the very beginning, and we won't stop. Uh, you know, you can put it on your motorcycle jacket or your, you know, 90s ripped up jean jacket. Um, that's for you. All right, thank it's you It's a very much. badge of honor, sir. I don't have a motorcycle. <laughs> I will put it somewhere nice. Thank all right, you. all right. Thanks a lot. <laughs>